will now have the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the Please remain standing. We will now have the pleasure of allegiance. Michael Ford. Pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Okay, maybe, maybe be seat, or excuse me, I'm sorry. It's all right. Would you bow with me, please? Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the uh, multitude of blessings that you've given us, Father. We thank you for the opportunity now to come and remember those who gave their yesterday so we can have today, Father. We pray for them. We pray for their families. And we thank them for their immeasurable service. Father, we pray that you will um, bless this ceremony in their honor. And we pray that you will continue to watch over and care for each one of us. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Okay. You may be seated. And before we get started, I'd like to give Miss Janice Irie a hand for the... <laughs> and before we get started, we'd like to acknowledge all of our Special guest, uh, Representative Billy Mitchell. Okay. Commissioner Larry Johnson. Uh, Chief, um, 
Is it Fulham? Fulham? Is he? Yeah, okay. Deborah Deberry? Is she? Is she? And are there any more? Senator Dale Gamble, Gail Port. Okay. Okay. At this time, we're going to have the introduction of our guest speaker, Dr. Wayne Williams. This gives me a lot of pleasure, uh, and I think it should give everybody a lot of pleasure that has uh, watched Senator Anderson over the years and the hard work that she puts out for veterans, and I mean literal, physical work. She's not scared of work. Uh, Senator Anderson uh, is a, a Democrat elected in 2016 to the Georgia State Senate to represent the 43rd District. Senator Anderson's district includes parts of DeKalb, Rockdale, and Newton counties. Senator Anderson serves as the secretary of the Retirement Committee. She is also a member of the Public Safety, Special Judiciary, Veterans, Military, and Homeland Security Committees. In 2012, Senator Anderson was elected to serve as the first state representative for the newly formed District 92, which covers portions of DeKalb and Rockdale County. While in the House of Representatives, she served as the chair of the Women's Legislative Caucus, which was a bipartisan organization that advocates for issues that affect Georgia women and families. She also served on the Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee and with the Working Families Caucus. Senator Anderson retired from 20 year, uh, in 2012 from 21 years of honorable service in the U.S. Air Force Reserve, and she continues to volunteer and advocate for veteran services. In addition, she volunteers in the community through local senior centers, uh, through the NCNW, the NAACP, uh, the NCBW 100, and several nonprofit boards. Senator Anderson is the recipient of numerous awards to include being honored by the National DAV president for her efforts in advocating for the veterans community. In 2015, she was awarded the Women of Influence Award from Women Veterans Social Justice and awarded the Women of Excellence Award in 2014 by the National Foundation of Women Legislators. Senator Anderson began her elected public service as a city council member in the city of Lithonia from 20, 2006 to 2008 and then she served as mayor from 2008 to 2011. During her tenure as mayor of Lithonia, she gained funding for the amphitheater renovation project and completed the installation of $1.2 million in a federally funded streetscape improvement plan. She gave oversight to the completion of the terraces at Parkview, a housing complex for 94 low and moderate income families. She brought Lithonia into compliance with the EPA, EPD standards for stormwater improvements and received a no findings rating on city financial audits. She's honest. Senator Anderson, a member of several national and local government organizations, including Women in Government, NBCSL, BLBC, Nobel Women, Atlanta Regional Leadership Institute, and Leadership DeKalb. As a former board member, she continually serves as a volunteer for the DeKalb County Board of Health through the Living Healthy DeKalb Initiative. Senator Anderson 
is a preacher <laughs> and is very active in her church. She holds a degree in business administration with an emphasis in management from Alabama State University and a Master of Divinity from Luther Rice University. In April 2012, she was conferred an honorary doctorate in humanitarian services from the Global International Alliance. For those who have never met her, meet a phenomenal woman, which is one of the highest accolades that I give to sterling, superb women of service. Our friend, a leader in the community, and a great state senator. Oh, wow. Good morning. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful introduction. Um, it is my honor and my pleasure to be here today to serve you. Um, I am, as um, Dr. Williams said, Tanya Anderson, the state senator for Senate District 43. My district covers portions of DeKalb, Rockdale, and Newton, and I am so proud to be your voice and your champion in the Georgia State Senate. I want to give honor to my colleagues, Senator Gail Davenport, my seatmate. Uh, we take care of each other every day under the Gold Dome. My former, well, my current colleague and former House member, Representative Billy Mitchell, thank you for your leadership, your guidance, your mentorship from day one. Commissioner Johnson, I bless you and I thank God for you because when I was in the city of Lithonia, you were there to support me. And we have here Shai Armstrong from Com um, Congressman Hank Johnson's office. Welcome and thank you for being here today. I wanna thank Dr. Williams and my colleagues on the DeKalb Veterans Advisory Board. We do so much uh, for DeKalb County, for our veterans. Uh, we are one of the champions who have um, worked to eradicate homelessness in our county, one of the first counties to tackle that. And I wanna say thank you for all that you do. Um, we donate scholarships, we feed the homeless, everything that we can do to help our veterans, we do it. And I thank you for rolling up your sleeves and helping um, to make a difference in our community. Well, because I'm a veteran, I know the importance of this day. Not only um, did I serve, but I served um, alongside some wonderful men and women um, in the armed forces. If you are active or even retired and you have served, would you please, please stand? Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. I know folks um, like to give shout outs, but I have to give a shout out to my Air Force sisters in the house. Hey, oh, I got a whole bunch of heads up here. Whoa, we usually are outnumbered. But thank y'all for being here today. I'm wonderful, wearing my wonderful blue for the love of. To the spouses, children, and family members of our veterans, would you please stand? Thank you so much for your support and standing by our soldiers when we needed it the most. Well, we are celebrating Memorial Day. And this day is distinguished from Veterans Day because we honor and remember those in our military service who have paid the ultimate price for our freedom. These were the brave men and women who did not return home to their families. These were the men and women who entered into service wanting to make a difference and did. They made a difference a thousand times over by paying with their lives. On May 30th, 1868, we began the tradition of honoring our fallen. Many gathered at the Arlington National Cemetery to pay their respect to our soldiers. It was in the wake of the American Civil War when some 600,000 soldiers lost their lives and Decoration Day 
became a time when wreaths and flowers were laid on the graves of our fallen. It wouldn't be until 1971 that Memorial Day became a national holiday. For 151 years, our nation has set aside this day to pay tribute to patriots who loved this country and gave so much for their country. Their devotion is one that we shall never forget. For that, we remember and we're grateful. When I think about the brave men and women who wear our uniform, I am reminded of the values that drive them. Those values are honor, courage, and selflessness. <clears throat> honor, the high respect, the high esteem, the giving of oneself. We must honor our veterans. Courage, the ability to do something in the face of fear and to have strength in the face of pain or grief. Courage, they were courageous enough to fight. Selflessness, we must have concern for others above ourselves. The Air Force Corps values our service before self and excellence in all we do. Selflessness, they were willing to serve. These three values, honor, courage, and selflessness, live in our hearts, especially for those who risked everything for us to have the freedom that we enjoy. May the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice continue to rest because they fought the good fight. In our hearts, live the bravery of our men and women in uniform. In our hearts, live the GIs who defeated the cruel times in Europe and the Pacific. In our hearts, we share the victory of World War II. In our hearts are the Red Tails, the Tuskegee Airmen, who fought long and hard for freedom and justice for all. They're in our hearts. In our hearts are the sons and daughters, sisters and brothers, who laid down their lives for us. In our hearts are the Korean War veterans. My dad, who was a Korean War veteran and still lives, a champion to me. In our hearts are Vietnam veterans. In our hearts are the Iraq Afghanistan veterans. In our hearts are those who serve with courage, honor, and selflessness. And because they are in our hearts, Memorial Day can only be a time for us to contemplate the gaps that still exist in services we provide our living soldiers and veterans. Many veterans who bravely fought for our freedoms have never been able to visit a national memorial to honor their fallen friends. Those they fought shoulder to shoulder with protecting our freedom. Honor Flights is a program that sends veterans from World War II, Korean War, and Vietnam to national sites so they can honor their colleagues. There are a range of assistance programs that include job training for their families, medical care, service animals, supplies, and home support that help to ease the transition of soldiers back home. As a nation, we must and we can do better by our veterans. The fight should have ended when the war was over. Our veterans shouldn't have to fight for health care. They shouldn't have to fight for those benefits. They shouldn't have to fight to live in safe and sanitary housing because they earned the right when they return home. The war should have ended when they return home. Our veterans are our prized possessions. Our veterans are those that we love and continue to serve. And I know that veterans who are retired, they have the heart to continue to serve. I may have retired, but I didn't stop serving. You may have retired, but I know you're not stop, you haven't stopped serving. You're not tired of serving because service is what calls. Service is what uh, gravitates to you. And I thank you for continuing to serve. But the war should have ended because we celebrate our freedom. The war should have ended when the soldiers came home. Homelessness and soldier used in the same sentence to me, I always say, it's an oxymoron that shouldn't exist. Veteran and lack of health care 
should not exist. Veteran and uh, a lack of um, uh, economic base should not exist because they fought for our freedom. We continue to remember that giving that they gave their lives for our freedom. Giving your life to protect this country and our freedom should not be taken lightly. I believe those who sacrifice so heavily will want us to continue to engage more with one another. They will want us to celebrate our freedom, absolutely, to laugh and to love. But they would also want us to be more engaged deeply in our democracy, the very thing they die to protect. The greatest honor we could give our fallen heroes is to honor through our participation. We can do more of that by voting and volunteering. We can teach our children and we can remember. This is a day to unite us as Americans, regardless of faith or political leanings. It is a time for reflection. Is it a time to remember how precious and delicate our freedom is? Even now, as we sit in this room, someone's guarding our borders. Someone's fighting by air, land, and sea. Even while we're in this room, we have to celebrate the freedom. We have to celebrate the soldier. We have to celebrate the courage. When we gaze upon our flag, may we remember those who came before us and paid the ultimate sacrifice. It's time to remember. As your state senator, I encourage you to continuously keep these families in your prayers. A testament to this is John 16, 13. Dr. Williams told you I was a preacher. I'm just going to give you a little bit. <laughs> Greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. We are so grateful to our soldiers, and we're grateful for the families of our fallen. May God bless you and all who serve. May God shine his everlasting love upon those who have sacrificed their lives to protect us in this great county of DeKalb, in this state of Georgia, and in these United States of America. Thank you. You know, every now and then we come up with these little <laughs> eagles. And this is definitely a soaring eagle. Thank you, Thank you Senator. Thank we you. appreciate Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we're going to take a little intermission here on this and get some information from our Atlanta VA Medical Center. And we are blessed to have the assistant director for the Atlanta VA, Mr. Rosado. Oh, okay. Good morning, everyone. Oh. Appreciate that. I'm not going to take much. It's a very hard act to follow. We're not even going to try that. Okay. Awesome. But I want to take the time on behalf of the executive leadership team at the Atlanta VA Healthcare System. And I want to thank you, Dr. Wayman D. Uh, Williams, for all your work as a member of the Atlanta Veterans Advisory Board and the work that you have done with the VA Medical Center. It's been a great year, and we thank you for all your support on behalf of the executive leadership team at the Atlanta VA Healthcare System. Thank you, sir. I, do. I am stunned. <laughs> Simple to the point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I thought he was coming to give information. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay, let's look at the program. Where am I? <laughs> Ooh, my goodness. Okay. Boy, these glasses. Okay, we have an organization that not a lot of us know about it on the surface, but how many veterans do I have in here? Okay, now I am going to go ahead and I'm going to say one thing before I uh, bring this young lady up because I, I want her to talk about one or two little things. We were blessed and I was very blessed to be at the grand opening 
to a women military sorority headquarters, national headquarters, right here in DeKalb County at the Omega World Center. Beautiful, beautifully done. I mean, they were wonderful in, in walking an old dude through that they didn't know from Adam's house cat. Uh, not realizing that I, I wanted to definitely make sure that everybody else knew about them. Um, because I think I have spent most of my adult life really pushing for, for strong women and for women to realize their strength. So I have been overjoyed ever since I heard about Kappa Epsilon Psi, uh, the military sorority. And this is one of the biggest places. They have chapters all over the world. And they've done it in a short amount of time. And then, oh, by the way, the other thing that they did was they were so good that they had us men come in and ask them, can you show us how to do that? So we have a male fraternity, which they mentored and started off there two years after they started. They are doing phenomenal work. One of the programs that I actually love that they are really doing that she didn't talk about, and this was the mentorship of young girls and showing them what it means to be a woman. Uh, and that's just an absolutely phenomenal thing. Unfortunately, the president, the national president of that group, being busy as she is, has an emergency of family situation, and I specifically wanted to recognize her uh, solo. But I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit about Tamika ahead of time, especially since we have it on film and she can see it later. Uh, Tamika Donnell is the national president. She was a 21-year Army veteran from Columbia, South Carolina. She graduated from Webster's University with a dual Master of Arts degree in Management and Leadership and Human Resource Management. She earned her Bachelor of Science degree uh, in Psychology with a minor in Human Services from Columbia College. Ms. Donald spent a significant portion of her time modeling, mentoring, and coaching and setting the conditions for thousands of soldiers. Uh, my first actual interaction with her, and I don't think she realized that I didn't either till I was looking at it, was when she was commanding a wounded warrior company up at Fort Campbell. Uh, and the bottom line is she has just given her life as just a role model. Uh, and she set the conditions. Before that, she was managing the budget for the Wounded Warrior Battalion there and making sure that they had the resources. And as a result of that, she was selected by the brigade commander to command that company because that's not what she came there to do. And that's just how good she is. Uh, this is a woman who is engaged in her community, in her church, and she's bringing all that energy right to DeKalb County. So without further ado, I want to present the uh, Eagle Award from here to uh, uh, her vice president on her behalf and another Eagle for the organization that they can display at a point that says that DeKalb County loves them and we welcome them. You just tell us what you need us to do to try to get behind and support you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much. I am not Tamika Donald, but I am grateful to stand in her stead and receive this award on, on her behalf and on behalf of our beloved organization, Kappa Epsilon Psi Military Sorority Incorporated. We have just opened our international headquarters here at the Omega World Center. We're home and we are glad to be here. Uh, pre prior to coming here, we were a post office box on the wall. But in grand fashion, we came and we moved here, and we are very excited. Thank you to all of the elected leaders. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for, your, um, for recognizing us. I just want to give a couple of words about who we are. We were established in 2011. We have two founders that are still living. One of our founders actually lives here in the greater Atlanta area. And the premise behind what we do is simple. Women of service, being of service. And that's exactly who we are. We are women who have served our country in every different, in every different branch of the service, Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. And we've taken our service to the communities in which we live and work. And we continue our service in every facet. 
We adopt highways. We work with youth programs. We work with veteran service organizations. We work with men, women, young, old, it doesn't matter. We are a very diverse group of women. And our goal and our um, vision is to revolutionize the face of the veteran. Most times when you see veterans, you see men, and sometimes you see not African Americans. We're not an African American based organization, but we just wanna change and revolutionize the face of the veteran. So when you think of the veteran, it's inclusive of all who have served. I'm honored to stand before you as the National Vice President of Cap Epsilon Psi Military Sorority and accept this award. We are at the Omega World Center and we have dedicated ourselves to service. Whatever we can do, please let us know and we will extend our hand back. Um, we do have a brother organization, Kappa Lambda Chi Military Fraternity Incorporated. Um, they are not out of Atlanta right now, uh, but they, they do work in tandem with us. Our largest chapter in our organization is here, and we have chapters throughout the entire United States and overseas. We're a group of over 1,500 veteran women. So if anyone's interested for more information, please go to www.militarysorority.org militarysorority.com, and you can find all of our information there. Thank you for such a warm welcome to Cab County. We're home, and we're glad to be here. Now, for a minute, let's get a photo <laughs> with this. We've got you. Excellent. Thank well, you, you can so put much. it there, and of course, we got the boxes. Okay, for it. thank you so much. And that, the other one for Thank you so much. Thank you so much, and I think I'm good. Okay. Okay. At this time, we're going to have the presentation of the brief. We ask that everybody remain seated until the ceremony is concluded. Okay, at this time we will have our benediction by Michael Thornton, and at that time he will bless the food. Before the benediction, I want to recognize another one of my colleagues who entered the room, Representative Karen Bennett, who represents the cab and Gwinnett, and she is also the um, chair, she and I have the pleasure of serving as chair and vice chair of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. Representative Karen Barron, thank you for being here.
behalf of DeKalb County and the Veterans Affairs Advisory Board, I thank you all for coming. If you will bow your heads, please. Our dear Lord, again, we come before you to thank you for this day, to give you honor and praise, to um, remember those who, like I said, gave their yesterday so we can have today, Father. We remember them. We remember their families. We honor them. We honor their families, Father. We also thank you now for this food. We thank you for the hands that um, stayed up all night preparing it and are now going to serve it to us, Father. We pray that you will um, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your continued service. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.